So we're doing a water change at the moment. We're draining some of the water out of the aquarium. Now, normally when the diver's available, we'll get the diver to gravel clean the gravel as we do a water change, but we don't have that privilege at the moment because he's not available today. Um, now, it's winter here in Sydney right now, so we're going to take the water down to here. Then we're gonna fill it back up again. But in summer, if you want to do larger water changes, you can. But don't do really large water changes in winter because you don't want to go chucking cold water in and then um, stressing your fish out. You can end up giving them white spot, sort of like giving them a cold and then they get sick and die. So we definitely do not want that. And um, all good. And I'm very impressed to see that the food is closed. It's very important that we keep our food fresh so we don't want to leave the food open. So fish keeping is 50% about water quality and 50% about nutrients. That's about the best food you can get. The other thing to be aware of is the more fish you have, the more you need to be prepared to look after the tank and the more water changes you need to be prepared to do. Now this tank is running a very low nitrate level right now. So that means the fish are not being overfed and that means that we do not have too many fish. If there was too many fish in this tank, then the nitrate level would be too high and that would be meaning that we need to start doing more with the fish tank. Right now the water quality, I'm very happy with the water quality besides the GH is too low, which I'll fix today. So um, this tank is currently not overpopulated and if it was overpopulated, we'd start seeing high nitrate. This tank actually doesn't even have high phosphate which means that this tank is not overpopulated. So the amount of fish you have and the quality of the food is very much um, what's gonna give you your results for your fish tank. So what I'm doing now is acclimatizing some new fish into this tank. So this tank backs onto the pool, and the lounge room's out there downstairs. And I've been slowly introducing fit water from the tank into here to make sure that the um, fish get acclimatized. Now, if it's a couple of degrees warmer that the fish are going into, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want it to be colder because if that water is colder than this water, then you want to acclimatize them nice and slowly. If that water is warmer than this water, then it really, it's not so bad. You don't want any more than a couple of degrees of difference. Otherwise, what I do is just grab the bucket, grab a bucket of water out of the tank, chuck it in here, wait five minutes or so, Grab another bucket out of there, chuck it in here until the temperature is comparable and then I can put the fish in, which I'm going to do right now because the temperature is very similar now. The temperature of the tank is slightly above the temperature of the um, bucket. So therefore, I'm totally fine to put that in. So let's, I'm going to tip that over. Yep, go. Okay. Be free, Willy. All right, now let's do this one. Belly flop. <laughs> Now the shark we're gonna to have to be really careful with because sharks love to jump. So what we're gonna do now is probably not chuck him in, I'll probably um, net him in. So if you open that up, yep, that's it. Now I'll just get him, get him like that, get him like that. In you go, buddy. That's a beautiful shark, that one. Now the next thing we need to do is, can you open that up for me? and tip that in next. So what this is is GH salts. GH is very good for the fish's immune system. It's good for their body slime. Um, so it really helps keep them nice and healthy. So we're just gonna tip, tip the whole lot in. And then if you were able to go back down to the shop in a week or two and just see how that settled in, 
and that's obviously going to raise your GH, but probably not going to get it all the way we need it. Um, so as long as it's not too low, I'm not too worried. But um, that will also give you a chance to check on the the um, KH. Um, so the KH was a little bit low. The KH is mainly a problem if it gets to zero. If your KH is zero, you can start losing fish. So it's just something to be aware of. All right, so we've got a lot of action going on in this tank right now because we've just introduced some more fish. So the star of the show now is this silver shark. Um, he is a monstrous silver shark. So because this tank's so big, you're really not getting any indication of how big this fish is. Like It's like a 30 centimeter fish. It's very beautiful, very active, very peaceful, very fast moving. Um, I really love silver sharks. So they're, they're really not too dissimilar in their temperament and so forth as these tinfoils. So the shark will be quite happy buzzing around with the tinfoils. Now there's a big sucking cat. This one is one of the biggest sucking cats I've ever seen. That fella there. So it's called a sucking catfish, and he'll run in there and um, help to keep your algae clean. So he's good. Let's see what else we can see in here. Um, this is a white band green terror. So now that's a white band green terror. When he colors up, he's a very beautiful fish, but he's the white version. And then in this tank somewhere, there is the gold or the orange version, which of course I can't see because I want to see it. So there's, a, so there's two green terrors in this tank now. Now we added some extra Oscars. So where are the extra Oscars? So the Oscars will have to have a little bit of a squabble and work out who's who. And we've got a big Lombardi there. That fella there, it's a Lombardi. Um, now the other thing that's not uncommon for Oscars to do is that. So this is called flip-flop. And flip-flop usually means that it's stressed. Because we just put it in there, that's not unusual. And it can also be from too much protein in the diet. But in this case, he's just got to settle himself in. So he goes and just sits there and looks like a rock. That is something you do see Oscars do. And soon enough, he'll just get up and swim around like the, like the rest of them. Now, let's see what else we can see. Oh, here we've got a Chinese, a Siamese algae eater, this fella. Very similar to the sucking cat. But this guy is going to go more for the blackbeard algae. As opposed to the um, green algae, the the algae on the grass that the sucking cat's going to go for. So having plenty of fish that eat algae is definitely a good idea because they help to keep your job, they help to help you do a job. Now I think the silver shark's my favourite now. I'm, I'm a big fan of silver sharks. So there's also, now I'm missing, I can't see the, there's a red devil. I think he's just there, I can't really see him be nice to see him. So I, there's a nice big red devil in here as well. And he has got a lot of personality. Um, when, when the red devil was down at the store, when I'd touch the glass, he'd come up and start trying to attack me through the glass. He very good for interacting. Oh, we got to, is the um, tap off now? Yeah. Yeah, cool, no worries, that's good. So Mr. Oscar's still flip-flopping. And that's probably a female Oscar too. So this is not technically true, but the rounder Oscar with the shorter fins like this are more likely to be female. If they've got longer fins overlapping the tail more and they're more oval shaped, they're more likely to be a male. That is not technically true. That is a generalization. Um, Oscars have actually bred in this tank. I've seen them breeding here and I've seen them breeding there. And I love it when Oscars breed because they really put on a show and they'll defend a territory and then the female will lay the eggs and the male will fertilize them. I really want to see that red devil, but I think he's gone down there. I think I can see him, but I'd like to video him. Here today. Because this tank is tens of thousands of litres, uh, it takes a long time to fill up. Like, this would probably take an hour and a half to fill up. 
or potentially more. There's a red devil. That's a flower horn, that fella. That's not the one I was looking for, but... Oh, these guys are breeding. So that's what it looks like when they're breeding. They do that little, what's called a T motion, where they spin around in a little circle. And the male will usually try to show the female where to put the eggs. And then the female will pick the eggs up in her mouth. So when you see that little spinny, spinny action, that you, oh, here's the um, green terror that I was looking for before. So that one's the, the gold band. And then we've also got a white band in here now too. Silver shark's loving it. So as we're filling the tank up, every sort of five centimeters, we want to make sure we put some water ager in. Because we don't want chlorine going in. So he's going to sprinkle a little bit of this in. And then let it fill up another five centimeters, then sprinkle a little bit in just to um, neutralize the chlorine. So that filler's new as well. Nice big flower horn looking cichlid. Now the, now the other thing this tank has got is it's got a massive pump down in that end. And that pump is absolutely wonderful for moving the water flow around. But I, I was a little bit disappointed about the noise. So it's, it's a little bit noisy. You can hear it. It's in there because that's all fish tank in there. So it's a pretty good thing to... Um, if you're not home or if it's not upsetting you just turn it on and let the water really move around but if you're trying to watch a movie in here or something like that you probably don't want it on um so even if it's on irregularly it's still very good because if you change the flow of the tank often it can sort of um free up a bit of detritus and um the fish definitely love the extra flow Also, having that extra flow down there is just something different for the fish as well. Because they'll go down there and they'll check it out and swim in amongst the water flow. You'll notice when you change your water flow of your tank, it's quite common the fish will come and sort of play in it. Uh, that's pretty normal. They're also amazing how much fish change colour. So this one's that colour, that one's that colour. They really change their colour all the time. I'm thinking the silver sharks is my favourite. I just love the way they sort of patrol the fish tank just like that. And this is a very big fish. Like, it's very uncommon to get a fish like that into the shop and then find a suitable house for such a big active fish. Because this is a very fast moving, very active species of fish. And they're actually one of the most inappropriate aquarium fish. Because silver sharks are cheap and they're beautiful. And not many people really understand how big these things get and how much room they really need to be happy. So this fella has um, found himself in about the best circumstance that he could because it's a very big, fast-moving, beautiful fish that's found himself in a nice big fish tank. So it's not uncommon for people to go buying things like the Oscars, things like tinfoil barbs and things like silver sharks because they're cheap but people underestimate how big these things grow. All of these fish grow in the sort of 30 centimetres long and they're a big chunky fish. And if you've got yourself a four foot fish tank and you've got a one foot fish, it really isn't ideal for the fish. Um, this situation is ideal for these fish. There's nothing more exciting than chucking new fish in and seeing how they all interact. Now we've turned on a pump that's in the corner here. It's like a 30,000 litre an hour pump. And it's really ruffling up the water. Like you can see that the water clarity has really deteriorated. And that's very much um, because we've now got more water flow in the tank. Um, so, Having more water flow really helps to um, free up all the crap and improve the quality of the water. So I'm a big fan of increased water flow and the fish love having a bit of current to swim against.
He'll look beautiful when he gets big. Anyway, put a little comment on the bottom of this video and tell me, have you ever seen a fish tank this big in someone's house? It holds about 20,000 litres of water. So it's probably equivalent to some people's lap pools. So this is a new fella here, like a Sinspilum looking fish. Then you've got like a red devil looking fish. Also with fish, you find the more you learn about them, the more you tend to identify with them and enjoy them. So if you do have a beautiful fish tank, or even a crap fish tank, it's good to jump on Majestic Aquariums TV on YouTube and start watching some of the videos and you'll be surprised how much you really start to enjoy your fish as you learn more about them. People that don't learn anything about their fish just don't seem to have the passion as just learning a little bit. So even if that means that you're, um, jump on YouTube, watch some videos, particularly on the fish that you've got, even if you just go out of your way to learn about the fish you have, where are they from, what do they do, the more you learn, the more you enjoy. And that's why people come up to me and they'll go, you're, you're so lucky you've got a job that you love. So I really believe that passion is governed by knowledge. The more you learn, the more you enjoy. So take a little bit of time, jump on Majestic Aquarium's TV on YouTube, subscribe it, give it a like, and watch some of the videos, particularly on the fish that, that you've got. And you can use the search bar on the channel, and you can um, do a little search and write food, or filter, or silver shark, or tin foil, or whatever you want to learn about, or plants, or lights, and it comes up with videos to teach you all about it.